quadratic equations then? A quadratic equation is one that involves an x squared term. So if I've got an equation to solve, and in, inside that equation, the highest power of x in the equation is x squared, it's called a quadratic if the, high power, the highest power of x in the my equation is a cubic, then it's a cubic equation and so on. But the squared terms are called quadratic. So that's all it is. A quadratic equation is one that's got x squared in it. And there are ways that we go about solving them. We're going to look at them. Let's look at the situation and combine what we've been talking about already. I've got two equations there. And so they're simultaneous equations. I've got 3x squared minus 4y equals 2, and 8x plus 10y equals 10. Uh, sorry, minus 10. So they're simultaneous equations. As we've seen already, I've got two unknowns, two scenarios. So what I'm going to do is to try and think about solving them. The first way we're going to do is the um, graphical method. So I'm going to plot them. Let's plot this first equation. 3x squared minus 4y equals 2. Here it is an autograph. 3x squared minus 4y equals 2. So here it is, just in the notes. Um, first thing to notice is the shape. That's the classic quadratic shape. Uh, if I had a negative 3x squared term, what that would do was actually turn the curve over so it would look a little bit like that. So we always get that sort of shape. It can be thinner, it can be fatter. We'll look at what determines those sorts of things later on. But that's what I expect to see. Now, if I've got a situation where y equals something, I want to find out what y is. This is the y-axis up here. For a given value of y, if I want to find out what x is, notice straight away there are two possibilities. Remember from the drill, I said when you find a square root of a number, you always get positive or negative. That's what's going on here. If I were to try and find out what y is, at some point I'm going to have to square root because I've got an x squared term in there. So to get the x, I'm going to have to square root. So if the first thing to recognize is when you're solving equations involving x squared terms, you're going to have two possible answers. And in this case, they're going to be the same number, look, but one's positive and one's negative. Not always the same number, but that idea of having a, pos a root being either positive or negative leads to this. So that's the first thing to, re to remember when you're looking at quadratics, two possible answers. What I'm going to do now is add the second equation. What do you notice? They don't cross. There are no values of x and y that satisfy both of those scenarios. So those two equations, in other words, that I've set up, one and two, there are no solutions to it. And without being able to plot it, that would have been quite difficult to show. Algebraically, it'd have gone, gone ahead, we can maybe try it later, but then got stuck, we can't finish it. And so, no answer. So, I said at the beginning of today with simultaneous equations, sometimes there is no solution, here's one. And the graphical way shows you instantly that there's no solution. So that's one of the, the power of these things. But let's look at one where there is a solution. So let's look at, I'm going to change these values of 1 and 2 slightly to give us these two. Example number 2 here. And again, let's look at them graphically. This time, they do cross. And I had to go at this early and put the values down so you can see it look. If I put these two lines on here, we've got the linear graph, which is this one. 8x plus 10y equals 10, and then we've got the quadratic, which is this one here, 3x squared minus 4y equals 2. But notice there are two places where the lines cross, so two solutions. And if we were to zoom in using autograph, we could get what that value is, x equals minus 2.1 and y equals, when y equals 
or this solution here x equals 0.9 y equals 0.3 two possible values for x and y where they satisfy these two simultaneous equations and then we think of our engineering scenario and think well are they both possible maybe the negative x values aren't possible so the only solution that really makes sense is this one but I have to consider that there may be two so how do we go about doing this without solving it graph graphically? Let's have a look. So first of all, we solve by substitution. So we rearrange number 2 for y. So look at that second equation, which is probably the most straightforward of it. Rearrange it so that it equals y equals something then substitute that expression into equation number one. So I'll just pause that for a second while you do that. So hopefully you've got something like this. But I rearrange number two for one, sorry, for y, I get this, y equals one minus 0.8x. Divide both sides by 10 here, so 10 divided by 10 is one. Eight divided by 10, 0.8. Every term has to be divided by 10, remember. So now in 1, instead of writing y, I'm going to write this expression, 1 minus 0.8x. Expand out the brackets. Note here, if you just look up, make sure you get this bit, minus 4 has got to be multiplied by each of the terms in here. Minus 4 times 1 is minus 4. Minus 4 times minus 0.8 is plus 3.2x. So be careful when you're multiplying through by a negative number equals 2 and then I would just add 2 to both sides to get this and I can go no further I can't add the x's together because it's, it's an x but x squared I can only add things that are exactly the same so I can't go any further than this collecting like terms together that's my finish point I've got to try and now find x before I can substitute that value in to get y for our simultaneous equations. So how do I find x? I've got to solve this quadratic equation. It's quadratic because it's got an x squared term in it here. So what I want to do now is to look at some general methods for solving quadratic equations and then come back to this and solve it. Okay.